on this edition of Around BCC. We hit the road for our yearly look at the activity at BCC's New Bedford campus. BCC celebrates African American History Month, and BCC men's and women's basketball teams advance to the postseason. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. We are in the month of March. Hopefully spring is literally right around the corner. We've had a tough winter, as you all know, watching the program, and we hope that uh, spring will bring warmer weather by the end of this month at least. And we're also pretty much through the midway point of the spring 2014 semester at all of Bristol Community College locations. One of the great things that we've been able to do since we've done the show, at least the last four or five years, is spend some time uh, outside the main campus in Fall River and visit some of our satellite locations. We're going to dedicate just about all of our show uh, this month to one of our satellite locations. We are in New Bedford, the Whaling City, at the uh, New Bedford campus, and we're going to talk about all the exciting things, and there's been a lot of exciting things over the last year here in New Bedford. Joining me today is the relatively new dean, I guess, of the New Bedford uh, campus, uh, Wes Lundberg, and also Karen Varrier. We've talked to Karen before about eHealth careers. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank, thank you, you for having us. Having us. Great to be back in New Bedford. I it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wes, you, you've been a dean here for a little less than a year? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a year next month, I think. Okay. Talk a little about your background. People who may not know who you are and what, what do you bring to BCC? Sure, yeah. I've been in higher education for 22 years. Uh, started out as a professor of English um, in Minnesota at a community college. I've spent my whole career at community colleges. And, um, uh, yeah, so I, I started in Minnesota and went into administration there after 11 years of teaching and um, uh, found that it was a good fit being in ad ad administration. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's more of a, ma a macro way of serving. Mm -hmm. But uh, from there I went up to Alaska at a community college where I was chief academic officer and, um, and then was uh, very suddenly and unexpectedly put into the president's position in an interim capacity. And I think that's probably what made me a good fit for this position was, right. was overseeing an entire three, three campus college. And, uh, and then, yeah, I was lucky enough to come here. So, um, so you talk about the bad weather we've had in New England this year. You, Minnesota, Alaska, <laughs> we should keep our mouth shut because I think you've had some, some, some stories you can share with bad weather in those two states. Well, let, let's talk about New Bedford. You, you, you've been here now, like I said, for almost a year. Um, there's, we'll talk about some specifics about how this campus has grown, not only physically, but also in terms of programs. Uh, what impresses you about what's been happening here in New Bedford? Let me get that from you. Well, you know, I guess I would go straight to the community. Um, yeah. The community is fantastic here. I, you know, I've shared many times, I grew up in San Diego um, and saw that city revitalized. And, um, you know, it went from warehouse districts and everything downtown to gas lamp quarter and the tourist draw. When I came here, I saw that same kind of a, a thing. The yeah. city is poised to grow that way, and you see a lot of lot of community efforts that that feed right into that. So, um, I guess you know, just seeing what was here and and knowing that there's a community college presence in a in a community of ninety five hundred thousand that's been underserved in the past mm. was stunning to me. You know, right? So, so just it all looked good. It all looked upside, and uh, the programming that's going on here, the way that the college is structured across all three campuses, um, you know, it's it's it, it's a great place to be. So. Mm. I was fortunate enough to be here when the New Bedford campus launched 11, 12 years ago now, um, with the the Star Store location on Union Street, and uh, seeing the growth of eHealth in the past two, three years. Um, it, it seems like that New Bedford has really become, BCC has really become ingrained in the city, and I'm sure you've seen that in the past year. But let's talk a little bit about what has changed maybe in the past year. We are located at the 800 Purchase Street location uh, in, in New Bedford, where uh, eHealth is located and, and other programs. Um, there was a need ever since that first Union Street location opened for more space. And over the past year, this building has really grown, and BCC is pretty much the, the dominant occupant here. Talk a little bit about the changes here. Yeah, we are. And it's been over the last three years, I think. Yeah. Um, and maybe Karen can speak to this a little bit more uh, from previous to a year ago. But basically, it's been a, a, an addition of a floor being right. you know, re retrofitted or whatever for a college function. And just last summer, we took over the fourth floor. 
and so that leaves us with uh, part of the third floor that we don't have, the small fifth floor, and then the basement we share with others, and Cafe Arpeggio, of course, on the first floor. But yeah, mm -hmm. other than that, it's, it's BCC. So. And how has that helped uh, the, the space crunch in terms of trying to provide more offerings for students in this area? I would say that we're keeping up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, we're still we're, never enough space. That's I know, right. Yeah. Well, you know, we've we've got 2,200 students here, and right. that's that's a sizable uh, student body, and um, we're still growing. We're eight percent for spring, um, okay. eight percent growth, and that's um, that's approaching what in higher ed might be considered almost unmanageable unless you're really proactively planning for growth. Um, we we are planning for expansion and looking at ways to do that. Um, we were just uh, approved for a $20, $20 million bond bill. Right. Um, so we'll see you know, how long until that plays out. But that's for a new building or renovation in downtown New Bedford mm -hmm. for BCC. So, so that's, that's in the works. Um, uh, you know, Union Street, we continue to hold on to the space there mm -hmm. and have done some shuffling around. Biggest change in the last year has been uh, combining the two operations of eHealth, which was pretty much all that was happening at right. Purchase Street and then combining with the traditional college, which was at Union Street. Now it's all mixed up, mm -hmm. and we're, uh, we're one campus now, so. Yeah. Now, um, talk a little bit about um, when, when New Bedford campus started, there were, there were a limited number of offerings. There were some entire programs that students can get degrees here now. From what you know, what are the percentage of students who, who pretty much stay in New Bedford? To, to get their education. Is that, is that number growing as well in terms of students saying, uh, you know, I'm getting all of my coursework done in New Bedford. I may not need to go to Fall River or any other location. Oh, that, that would be an increasing number. Right. Um, you know, as we have more and more things coming online, more and more students have the option of staying here. So um, a great example of that is a new program that we're talking about. Uh, we're actually planning now English as a second right. language and rolling that out. Um, just last week we had a, a major, the first major meeting for planning uh, for that to roll that out in the fall. But that's a program that's been traditionally housed in Fall River mm -hmm. and now we're looking at bringing it here as well. So 28% um, of the students that are in that program at Fall River um, would now have an option of coming okay. here. They probably won't because they're in programs there, you know, right. but some of them can come here. But if you think about 28% of those students going to Fall River from here, what's the population that's not being served, yeah. the ones that can't get to Fall River, you know. Mm. So, so that's where we're looking at expanding. Mm. Um, just to kind of dovetail on that a little bit, when the New Bedford campus uh, was added to BCC, there's a big fear that there's going to be all those students that are at Fall River that are from New Bedford <laughs> are going to come this way. That never happened, no. you know. It's, uh, it's just expanded. Mm. And you tap into a whole new population, and I think that's what's happening with the programming that we see here as well. Mm -hmm. And it's still inter interesting and important to note that there's still a BCC presence at New Bedford Vogue yes. as well. Yes. And how, how is that still working? Are still type same type of programs there? Is there any expansion there, or how is that? That's actually the biggest area of growth really? in BCC. Unbelievable. <laughs> All across the there college, we go. yeah, 40% right. uh, growth right now. And some of that is the classes that we're adding. The programming there is really f uh, focused on a transfer program, mm -hmm. so it's general education courses. Mm -hmm. And students that are there that want to get into a degree program at some point will probably have to uh, get to one of the larger campuses, but um, hopefully here. Um, but yeah, that program continues to grow. And we were just, uh, last week we had a planning meeting uh, looking at strategically for New Bedford what we should be doing, and, and our director from Folk Tech was here yeah. and uh, part of that, that planning process. So. I want to talk with Karen a little bit about eHealth. We, uh, we probably last did a program on eHealth maybe about a year and a half ago. Yeah, it was, yeah, we were, we were down, downstairs. Right, right, that, and now a lot of that has happened. Yes, so yes. talk about, I guess, for people who don't know uh, about the growth of, of eHealth, how, how that has grown, say, maybe even in the last maybe two years. Um, well, a couple of years ago, we added a whole second floor, which increased, right. um, first of all, brought nursing to New Bedford. We're already in our second year of nursing, so that's mm -hmm. um, amazing. Um, we brought in a lot of equipment to go with that. Um, the nursing lab, the SIMS units, which are amazing. Um, and then we have also, because of that, has added to the growth this year with adding a chem lab and a microbiology lab, because now anybody who's in nursing can come here for everything. They do not need to leave the campus, that we have everything. Mm -hmm. um, but along with that, we needed more computer labs, so we've added two more of those. So now we have four computer labs on this campus. 
and are still looking for room. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, so as we grow and we see, um, but we, we've also thinking of ourselves a little more as a science center. So we're not just feeding into the programs that we have, which we've got a new partnership with South Coast. We're doing Central Sterile on their uh, premises because we can use their OR and not have to build an OR here. Um, so that's a great way to grow as well. Um, but we're thinking that people could come and do their pre-med courses here um, and really serve high school students and college students that are home for the holiday. Um, so, you know, this is going to just continue to be a place where people can, you know, grow in a science level. Mm -hmm. Are there still restrictions in terms of numbers of, of registrants in some of these e-health programs? And yes, all of them. Still very highly competitive. Yes, it is. It's, they're all selective. Right. Um, so there are 10 every semester for farm tech and, you know, 20 every year for nursing and 40 for OTA. So we have very specific numbers. Um, it's very competitive. There are some prerequisites more for something like nursing. But then we also have the programs where students can come in and in one semester become a phlebotomist, you know, which is a great turnaround. And the same thing with farm tech, you know. So you can change your life um, and really get a job in the healthcare field. And uh, then some people like to stay there and some use it as a stepping stone to move on to something like medical coding or mm -hmm. nursing. Um, so it's an introduction to get involved and it's always about stacking degrees in healthcare. Mm. And uh, you mentioned about the, 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 the new labs and you touched upon it a little bit how um, those labs don't necessarily need to only be used by students in e-health. It could be used for general science classes which again are very part of the overall educational experience here at BCC, correct? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and we've done a lot more of that merging. It, it's also um, driven the fact that we can then run. We're not limiting our numbers so that uh, we have full classes and it also kind of whets the appetite of people that weren't thinking about us. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've done a lot of that kind of cross piece where mm -hmm. people get involved in a bio lab as part of it and they say, gee, this is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Let me continue with this. We know that uh, the general offerings here in New Bedford has become well received in the community here in New Bedford. Is eHealth also gaining that foothold as, as a, a go-to place for students looking to get into the medical field? Is it starting to get that type of acceptance? Absolutely, and, and it's, as well as our partners, and we've, we've been um, working with Greater New Bedford uh, Community Health Center, it's only a few doors down. Mm -hmm. uh, they really needed some medical coding training because of the new regulations for um, the feds uh, starting in September. So they actually came to us, knew that we offered it, and we're helping them to train their people that are already mm -hmm. in the field, getting the, the higher degrees that they need. Mm -hmm. um, so that, it's really nice when they start to know you're here. Um, but we've done a, a tremendous amount of advertising and, you know, fortunately we are resting on the shoulders of Bristol Community College after 50 years. Right. And they've always had a great reputation. We've just brought it in a different format with hybrid learning, um, brought it to a different place in New Bedford, but um, we always have the same quality. Mm. You know, uh, there's always opportunities for Bristol Community College to get into other fields and um, here in New Bedford there's that opportunity as well. Uh, for pe people who don't know, the, the city is going to be embarking on uh, the wind power industry and BCC is involved in that as well. <coughs> Karen, do you want to talk about that, that program? Sure. Yes. Um, well, we are always trying to be, uh, again, <coughs> like Forerunner Week. We have several meetings with the um, community and we hear the mayor's speeches every year and we follow that. And that's, I think BCC has never forgotten about their community base. Right. So we look to the community of where are you going to grow and where can our people get jobs. So we've already started with our wind power. It's uh, four uh, courses over two semesters. And I just met with uh, the head of engineering yesterday to say, what are we going to do? And we're absolutely going to continue that because there are going to be more jobs here. And we're hoping to be having a foothold rather than to have to bring some people in from Germany. Uh, why can't we just use our great resources right here? Mm -hmm. um, so we have people that are excited about it. They want to be part of it. And, you know, there are the stationary windmills that we can see from this window. Right. Um, so beyond what's going to be done on our waterways, they're already existing in our communities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, BCC's also, um, have th they've done this in, in the Fall River campus, the uh, Fast Track Business uh, Program, and that's here now as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, it yeah, is. Okay. It's actually offered on weekends, okay. so if somebody Weekend. can get it in a fast track means they can get it done in a year, um, and they only have to come on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, we do eight-week courses um, back to back. Um, it's demanding, um, mm. but for somebody who really wants to get that degree in a year, 
they can come out with an associate's degree in business. Uh, so it's, it's a great, you know, dovetail. And we can attract people that are in banking or already working in businesses and have them get a degree to back up their what they need to be really more successful. Mm -hmm. And we've actually approached businesses in the community and told them of our existence. And some are willing to also pay for some of their employees to get more knowledge um, so that they can better serve them. Mm -hmm. Wes, getting back to you, we, we talked about some of the improvements. Uh, again, looking back at when new, the New Bedford campus started, uh, the goal was to make uh, New Bedford a, a fully functioning campus. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing more and more of that. You mentioned a little bit about this now a full enrollment center. Mm -hmm. Originally, you used to have to go to union, go into the office to register for classes. Now, sure. in the first floor of this <coughs> building, 800 Purchase Street, there's a, a pretty much full-blown enrollment center. And there's mm -hmm. also other amenities, if you will, mm -hmm. that this campus offers mm -hmm. that you would see in any other campus. So let's talk a little bit about the student sure. options. And, yeah. Sure, yeah. New Bedford is a, a fully functioning, recognized campus. It's recognized right. by the state system as a separate campus, and that means that it's fully functioning and offers all services, financial aid, mm -hmm. um, advising, uh, tutoring, you name it, it's all here. So anything that you can get at Fall River can be had here as well. Uh, the enrollment center, as you know, uh, when it was on Union Street, was was in a converted classroom. Well, right. Converted with quotes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> There's partitions up with chairs and desks right. in there, and that served as the enrollment center. Mm -hmm. And for you know where we were, that served very well. But it was time to move move that into something more of a true enrollment center, right. which is what you see downstairs. Right. Um, fantastic space. You know, we've got uh, as soon as you walk in, um, you see, this is where I'm supposed to be. Uh, this is where to start, right here. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And every campus needs that. You know, right. when you walk on campus, you need to feel like you know where to go if you're not already a student. Students who are already here know where to go. Right. Um, but anyone who's walking off the street walks in, there's someone to receive them, to greet them, and help them get to where they need to be. So mm -hmm. the name Enrollment Center, you know, helps uh, that students that are potentially coming here know that that's probably right. where they should be starting out. Right. So, yeah. There are some other services also to make it a full campus. We have a psychologist that comes, we have mm -hmm. a nurse that comes uh, to the campus, and we also have uh, disabilities here. So again, the full serving of all the student needs that they might have. Right. Um, so again, they don't need to travel to Fall River. We do consider ourselves part of the whole you know, community, but sometimes it's just difficult, mm -hmm. and we want to know that they can come here and get it off. And not to mention you know, student lounges mm -hmm. and uh, I just found out walking here today that the bookstore is having expanded hours and it's mm -hmm. going to be open more uh, for, for the benefit of students. And the library is getting uh, renovations and, and upgrading. So mm -hmm. New Bedford is definitely, um, definitely growing. Let me just ask you sort of as, a, as we wrap up here, um, what, sort of, what sort of a vision for, for maybe what could be next here in New Bedford? Mm -hmm. is, what, what can you tell us about maybe what could be next? Continued growth and our biggest challenge, you know, there's Karen and myself and Eileen Harrington are, are the admin team here and, and uh, working with uh, our staff here as well as uh, folks at Fall River. Um, managing that is the, is the trickiest right. piece. You know, where do we grow? How do we do that? I mentioned the, the bonding bill. Right. Um, but there's other possibilities here as well. So, you know, funding is always the, the biggest challenge. But just watching what the growth is, you know, in addition to the ESL, um, Karen mentioned the sciences, right. you know, all those science classes that she alluded to are not just for e-health. Those are, those are traditional science classrooms and some of the classes that we're running there are traditional science classes. Mm -hmm. um, getting back to how I felt coming onto this campus, what an ideal situation to walk into a campus that's already strong in the sciences. Right. Now what we need to do is look at more of the traditional, easier to enroll <laughs> right. areas such as arts and humanities. Right. So that's something that we're looking at is where would we run an arts program? We're talking to the art department and the dean of humanities about how to do that and what it would look like. Mm -hmm. so, so that'll be coming too. But meanwhile, we continue to grow the sciences. We have STEM Academy here. You know, there's a right. lot of talk about that. So um, that's just starting up. But, uh, um, you know, it's, it's where the need is right. and, and hearing from the community right. and, and measuring what students' needs are. And that also goes into what BCC is also very important, its role in workforce development and, yes. and, and tying in what is needed here, what exactly. is needing in, in, in this region. So yeah, I have yeah. a meeting tomorrow with them, and we, yeah. are, we are bridging that because as we go into some of these healthcare communities, they're saying we need someone who knows about customer service. We need this right. and that. We also see a need to continue the students that have graduated to have continuing educational units. So we want them to come back to always be part of their growth. Right. 
Um, so we're going to be offering some of that as well. Yeah. Wes and Karen, I appreciate it. we got to be in New Bedford. we got to come here more. <laughs> this is a beautiful location. Thank you for your time. And, uh, Thank you. Thank happy you. rest of the semester. Yeah. Thank you so much. You as well. Thank you. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Put all your, all your side objectives to the side and make, you know, basketball and college your primary goal. You know, we have long days here. Whether you have an 8 o'clock class in the morning and 8.30 practice at night, you know, you're here for a long amount of time. My name is Kevin Newby. I'm a college student, originally from Virginia. I chose to come back up here to go to college. Just did the online research, typed in community colleges in Bristol County area, and BCC came up. I saw, also saw a website about athletics, and I was very interested in that. It was a no-brainer. That was one of the reasons why I came to BCC. That was one of the big reasons, too, because they had a basketball team, and I saw that. And I was like, well, I don't see any other community college in the area that has a basketball team. And none of the other websites were saying that. And I was like, well, I'm choosing here. <laughs> I was excited, you know, because um, in Virginia, I played high school basketball. I played two years. I played my sophomore and my junior year. I didn't play my senior year. And um, I was really excited to get back into it. I love the sport. Just because this is a community college, our coach doesn't treat us like this is just a regular community college. You know? Through the toughness of our coach, through the strength of our coach, he wants us to be on an honors program or in honor society. He wants us to do it as much as we can. Sports is not just for supposedly the lame or the dumb. You know, sports is also an educational thing as well. This to me is is, is means the world to me. Uh, my ultimate goal is to be an advocate. I kind of want to work for with somebody like the NAACP or the Urban League or ACLU. Become with some organization like that helping poor people out, helping, you know, disadvantaged people. So, you know, once I got to play basketball, it was pretty, it was very motivational, you know, to say, oh, I'm a student athlete. Welcome back. As part of its commitment to multiculturalism, BCC recently completed a series of events commemorating African American History Month. The festivities celebrating African American history began in January with the traditional Martin Luther King Jr. community breakfast. Other events during February included a keynote address on the black church and the hip hop generation presented by Northeastern University professor Dr. Emmett Price and the student sponsored history of hip hop. The BCC Multicultural Committee has other workshops and events scheduled through the end of the spring semester. Consult the BCC website for more information. Well, it's been another very successful season for the BCC basketball program. Both the BCC men's and women's basketball squads qualified for postseason play as they wrapped up the 2013-2014 season. The men finished the regular season at 15-10, 14 and 9 in the Region 21 Conference. The women finished conference play at 6 and 7 and overall at 9 and 12. The athletic seasons continue for the Bees later this month as the co-ed tennis season gets underway. We get back to our New Bedford themed program now by taking a look at a faculty member who not only teaches all her courses in the Whaling City but also a New Bedford community leader. Hi, I'm Marlene Pollock, Professor of History here at the New Bedford downtown campus of Bristol Community College. I grew up in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio, mm. and I, was a I grew up in the 50s, and my family is Jewish, so my mother was very uh, freaked out by the Holocaust, or the Shoah actually mm. is a better word, and uh, basically uh, taught me a lot about the history of the Jewish people. I was in high school in the 60s, so here's the civil rights movement. I watched everything about it on TV, and then I was very touched by the women's movement, um, and then, of course, the anti-Vietnam War movement. So, to me, it was like these big historical things are happening right in my lifetime, and I just loved it. Plus, I was always good in history. I actually uh, got my uh, degree in history with an honors uh, at University of Michigan, but uh, believe it or not, I had a case of stage fright, so I said, I, I can't be a teacher because I can't stand in front of people, so I said, I'll be a librarian, you know? And I actually got accepted to Simmons uh, College of Library Science in Boston, um, that's how I got over here, and uh, 
spent the summer before I was supposed to come uh, do, being a librarian in a, a rural hot, um, library system and didn't like it. So uh, I said, well, you know, you just got to make the leap. You got to be a teacher. And so I got my Master's of Arts in Teaching at Simmons College and started teaching uh, in the public school system, first in Somerville and then in Dorchester. And then I took a hiatus for a while and I um, got involved in community organizing. Uh, you know, the war was still going on, obviously, and a lot, of, a lot of people were trying to figure out how to bring it to an end and how to get more people involved. So uh, uh, we were doing a lot of that work and I met my husband who was a, a professor at BCC already in Fall River and you know, we kind of hit it off. We had similar values, and um, so I moved down to Fall River. And somebody in the mid-'80s said to me, you know, you can teach at BCC um, because you have a master's degree. So that began my BCC career. Some of the courses that I teach are uh, world civilization, and I, I have taught American history, uh, American civilization, um, so I, I feel like I can teach just about any, any history that the college has. It's great to be in the same city that you live in, uh, to teach in that city. I mean, number one, because you know a lot of the people that come to your class anyway, but you can make references that are common to everyone. Uh, not that I didn't enjoy uh, working in Fall River, and I did that for the majority of my years, but when this campus became a full campus, uh, I decided to come over here, and I've I've loved every minute of it. I, I teach all my classes here. I think the students are very down to earth. They're very generous and sweet. You know, we have a lot of older students that will come in and they'll be worried about, you know, how are these younger kids going to treat me? And they always are nice and open-armed with everyone. Um, I have uh, students who, uh, who've had uh, hearing issues and, you know, they come in with the, the signers and everything. Everybody is just fine with that. Uh, people are very, they have big hearts and they're, uh, they're not arrogant at all. Um, I, I've talked to people who teach at some of the, you know, elite colleges and the students are very different. And I think that uh, it's, it's humbling to, to see what, how you can contribute to them and then make a difference in their lives. And, you know, they're just, they're just great people. I'm one of the co-founders of the Coalition for Social Justice. And this, um, this organization has been around since 1994. It's gone through some name changes, but um, actually started at BCC as the Coalition Against Poverty. Uh, and we've been able to grow this organization to fight for struggling working families. Through my work with the coalition and also being a parent of two boys in the city, uh, I've always had issues with the school system since they were little. And um, the New Bedford school system has run probably like a lot of cities around the country uh, in a way that uh, has left something to be desired. We had been doing, through the coalition, we had been doing a lot of work around um, trying to uh, close uh, a very bad alternative school, or change it, actually, I should say. And we had done so much work on this, and I really started to look for people who could run for school committee and ended up with myself running, which is not what we expected at all. Uh, and because of uh, the, all the volunteers that supported me, I was able to get elected, um, and then I was able to get re-elected. I just love BCC, I really do. It's uh, the, um, the mentality, uh, the attitude of the faculty, the staff, everybody is uh, very down to earth, very, uh, Loving. I know we have our conflicts <laughs> every once in a while, but the mission of uh, reaching out to students, a lot of students who are from working class backgrounds or low income backgrounds who have the opportunity to go to college and uh, maybe didn't do so well in high school uh, and really find their footing at BCC. That's all for Around BCC this month. We leave you with a look back at the exhibit featuring sculptor Nancy Selvage held recently at the Grimshaw Goodwitz Art Gallery in Fall River. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.